welcome to my channel my name is Nikki thank you for stopping by you guys I know that you like the talk through videos better than the voiceovers um I like those better too I feel very weird doing voiceovers but um when I was editing this video my air conditioner is so loud it's developed a little rattle that's 10 times amplified on video um and it's just you couldn't even hear me so i wanted to still share this pour with you guys because it's it turned out so beautiful um so i'm gonna go over the colors with you um this is the um deco art americana this is the premium it has kind of like the consistency of craft paint this was in thalo blue and I mixed it with a little bit of the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic in black to get a navy. You could use any Thalo Blue, but the reason I chose this one is because of the consistency. So if you're mixing paints, you kind of want them to have the same consistency. Um, that way your ratios of flow troll and water will stay about the same. Um, so that was just the logic behind picking that specific product. Um, you know, any thalo blue with some black would have worked. This is Metallic Cobalt Blue by Artist Loft. It's one of my favorite metallics from Artist Loft. It is so pretty. Um, if you've never used it, I suggest give it a try because it is really pretty. This is Unbleached Titanium, also by Artist Loft. Y'all, I did not just go ham on the paints. I was preparing enough paints to do two pours. So that's why there's so much um, paint okay um <laughs> i'm not the crazy paint lady i promise and then i have this color this is also a custom color this is artist loft dark yellow mixed with a little bit of artist loft orange um and the reason i i was doing these colors i just i have certain colors that are kind of hard for me to work with and i want to get better at working with them um, and so I just googled color palettes with orange because orange is a hard color for me to work with um, and I found this color palette um, this is just decor Americana decor metallics in copper so this is my color palette it's really um, not that complicated but I would have never thought to put these colors together on my own um, every time I do a color palette with orange it's always black orange yellow red that always seems to be my color palette and it's just because there are some colors for me that I'm not drawn to yellow uh, is my favorite color but I'm not drawn to pour with it um, and orange is one of those colors and red it's just not my it's not what I'm drawn to so I don't I, I can't think outside the box kind of I guess when it comes to these colors it's just like I have these set of primaries and secondaries that work with it and that's all I ever do so I would have never considered to, to put the blues with it um but it turned out so beautiful and that's just if you hit a stump and you can't think of any new color palettes just google it like have your one color that you want to work with and just google color palettes with that color and you can get all kind of inspiration I did want to add silicone to the navy blue and to the yellow orange so I pulled um, a portion of those paints because like I said I um I was preparing enough paint for two pours um, I used the pour magic uh, is that what it is it's the cell magic um, and it's just silicone I actually prefer the OGX silicone it's cheaper I'm just out of it and I keep forgetting to buy more when I go to the store that's all it is um, I put I was trying to get the equivalent of four to six drops in there but the dispenser is really big um, so it's kind of hard to control it it just kind of flows um, so there's a lot of silicone in these two paints I will tell you that um, but it worked out it was fine I am not going to talk through this entire thing um, because it's not a complicated technique this is really for beginners um, beginner to mid-level um, painters I think it's just um, it's impactful but it's relaxing to do you don't have to worry about you know making sure your ratios are perfect and this and that and this and that um, it's just 
fun, um, which is what paint pouring should be. Um, so, I'm going to put these, I have my little um, glass beaker, like I'm a mad scientist. You guys know I love these glass beakers. I like them because they have the pour spout. Um, but I'm just going to do a dirty cup. And then after I get all my colors in, I'm just going to go back and forth over my canvas um, and work my way from top to bottom. And then if there's any gaps, I use the unbleached titanium to kind of fill in those gaps. Um, and that's it. That's pretty much it. And then you tilt. It's very reminiscent of flipping drags, but without the headache of the drag. Because if you've ever tried a flipping drag, you know that... Um, a lot of times you'll have those bald spots where if you let too much of the paint come out at one time, then when you get to the end, you don't have enough for the end of the drag. This is a simplified flipping drag, I think. Um, so anyway, I am going to put this on fast forward, put you some music on. I'll be back at the end to talk you through the close-ups. And yeah.
Okay, you guys, so this is the end result. And you can see those little feathery wispy parts. Um, those are really pretty. I don't know why they happen. I don't know how to recreate them intentionally. I wish I did because I think they're so pretty. Um, but you can see that little grouping of cells too. It's really pretty. It's like looking at cells under a microscope. It's nice. <laughs> anyway, there's some more. Um, hold on. Let's find it right there. <laughs> there's some more of those feathery bits that are really pretty. And I like that yellow um, streak of cells that go down the center. So yeah, overall, it's really nice. I have zero complaints about this. It's already dried. It dried beautifully. Um, and yeah, I think I have the recorded dried results too. So I'm probably going to tack that on the end of this um, so that you guys can see how it looks. Okay, you guys, I actually want to display this like this the piece is dried look at those um, the feathery markings they held in place they're really pretty that metallic cobalt blue against the copper y'all this color palette was like on point I'm so happy I found it um, so beautiful I would gladly do this um, again with these colors um, so, anyway, yeah, I love it. It's beautiful. Anyway, um, here's a little extra I'll show you guys. I've mentioned before that I'll do dips in my, um, in my runoff. Just to show you how completely different effects you can get. These ones are the runoffs from that, that port. So, I did these dips. And these will get a resin and they'll be coasters so I think they're beautiful they're incredibly beautiful I love how this metallic cobalt blue played with the copper I smeared my finger across that when it was still wet but I'm still gonna keep it because I think it's not that bad so but this color palette and this color palette is exactly the same. It was the same colors, same cups. Everything was exactly the same. But this was done in a dump and swirl technique. And this is what the, dump, the dips come out like. So you can see how different they look. You wouldn't even know, really, that they were the exact same color palette. And then these are some that I did from the first um, pour I did of that style I don't know which one I'll paint first um, <clears throat> but um, actually no this was a dump and swirl too and but it was the same color palette anyway I digress but these are I tried to do them in sets of six um, yeah but those are my little coasters that I made with the runoff and that's the piece and I'm very happy with it so so happy anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will speak to you all very soon Bye.